station. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston, this is station. We are ready for the event. Hello, Administrator Nelson. This is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. A station, this is NASA headquarters. Uh, Bill Nelson and Pam Melroy here. How do you hear me? Senator Nelson and Pam, welcome back to the space station. I have you loud and clear. How do you hear me? Hey, we hear you great. Uh, Frank, you've uh, made all kind of records up there. Uh, and you've had six uh, months that you didn't expect. <laughs> uh, how are you feeling? Hey, sir. Uh, yeah, you're absolutely right. It was unexpected. Uh, in some ways, it's been uh, an incredible challenge, uh, but in other ways, it's been an incredible blessing. And so, you know, I count myself uh, lucky and honored to be able to represent the agency and our country. And uh, yeah, looking forward to getting to 365. Uh, finally, I think that'll be a really uh, good milestone for our nation to achieve. So you've got uh, the replacement crew that's about to come in a few days. Then you all will be going home. Uh, will you get to see your family uh, when you land in uh, Kazakhstan, or, or will they be uh, reuniting with you back in Houston? Uh, yes, sir. Well, I'll get to see my uh, CB family in uh, Kazakhstan, but unfortunately, I won't get to see my wife and uh, kids until I get back to Houston. But uh, it'll be good to see some familiar faces in uh, Kazakhstan for sure. Uh, Pam? Yeah, speaking of your wife and kids, they've been on my mind so much this last year. I, I can't even imagine uh, when you launched, you thought you were going to be up for about six months uh, or less. And uh, now it's extended, and I know they've been tremendously supportive of you. I just want to ask, I, I hope there's nothing critical that you planned on being home for that you've missed. Um, how have you been able to support your family from space? Hey, Pam. Well, first of all, thank you so much for uh, thinking of us. And, um, yeah, you know, there were some actual, I mean, this was a, a big year for us. Um, we had our oldest uh, finish off her plebe year at the Naval Academy, and then our um, second, uh, our son headed off to West Point. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, just big challenges as they apply for and start off their college and uh, young adult careers. Um, but at the same time, you know, we felt some incredible love and support uh, and just the prayers from our family and friends, our community. Uh, they just came around us and supported us. And honestly, uh, seeing the support that my family was getting, uh, made it so much easier to be up here and focus on the mission uh, because it just took that weight off my shoulders. And, um, you know, it was also like as much as it was a challenge for me as a father to miss all those things, it was also a pretty proud moment to see um, Deb and the kids just uh, thrive and overcome. Uh, and I'm, I'm sure they missed me, but at the same time, uh, you know, we, we all took on the challenge together and it was just really neat to see them uh, just have a great atti attitude throughout the past year. Hey, Frank, tell everybody uh, how you can communicate so frequently with your family. Uh, it's quite a contrast to the space shuttle when uh, we flew, and mm -hmm. I flew way back. Mm -hmm. uh, they wouldn't let us talk to our family. Now, our family could listen to the communications going on, but, of course, we were only up uh, a week, uh, a short duration. You're up there for a long time. Tell about that communication. Yeah, the, the communication it really is a uh, key. Um, so when we first got up here, we had uh, the voice over internet protocol telephone uh, calls that we could uh, pretty much make a phone call anytime we weren't working and we had KU uh, availability. And then a few months into our stay, we started developing uh, a, a video conferencing capability. And then uh, that became more and more robust and uh, something we were able to enjoy. So really for this last uh, half of the mission, uh, at least a couple times a week, I was able to do a video conference with my family, which was huge because it just helps you stay uh, so connected to, to obviously talk to them, but then to see them, I think just changes uh, the whole paradigm. And it was uh, really pretty special to be able to do that. 
That's great. I just have to ask, do they love seeing you floating in zero G? Do you do backflips to entertain them? Yeah, you know, it was really pretty cool to um, to show them around. Uh, and it, as you guys know, once you're up here for a little bit, um, you really get focused on the work. And sometimes you forget uh, to appreciate the fact that you are floating around and that you have this amazing view uh, down below you. Uh, and so every time I would show them ar around, um, it was pretty special because they would remind me. Uh, also, the other thing that it kind of um, you lose track of is the hum of all this life support equipment, right? And it's just constant noise. Um, but, it, but you tend to just uh, drone it out. And, and uh, when, when I would hear myself on the video conference, you hear that background noise and it just reminds you that it's, that it's there. Uh, and again, just reminds you of how complex this entire uh, station is and what an incredible feat it is that we've been in living in this thing for 23 years. Tell us about some of that work. Tell us about the science that you're doing. Yeah, it's been uh, really uh, pretty special. Uh, you know, we've been really busy this past year. Uh, some of my favorite science, obviously, as, as a doctor, is the biological sciences. Uh, we've done some plant experiments, uh, grew the first tomatoes in space. Uh, we've done some genetic studies on plant, which uh, on plants, which I'm really looking forward to seeing how that uh, turns out because it's looking at hey, the adaptations that plants develop in space. Are they able to pass that on? Uh, to subsequent generations, and so I think that'll be pretty uh, cool science. Um, we did our the first uh, 3D printing of uh, human tissue up here uh, in the biofabrication facility, uh, and that was pretty cool to, to both run and see. Uh, and then the material science was also pretty special, uh, doing some of the fiber optics um, development that we did up here, uh, the electromagnetic uh, levitation facility, um, yeah, really, uh, the combustion chamber. I, I've been, uh, the one thing that you do get to do as uh, the more time you spend up here is you get to have hands on on just about every part of the station. And so I count myself pretty uh, blessed that almost every single experiment we've had up here I've been able to take a part in. That's absolutely amazing. I mean, when you think about uh, all the different things that you just talked about and all the different things that are, you know, the, the fiber optic is going to, you know, have a potential transformation for commercial. But I think the the human part is very compelling and it's great to have a doctor on board. But I do have one question for you. Did you eat the tomato? <laughs> That's hilarious. I, I don't know who put you up for that, but I did not eat the tomato, and I wish I had at this point because I think everybody thinks I did. And uh, no, I, and it just perplexes me. I, I spent so many hours looking for that thing. Uh, but as you know, sometimes you lose things up here, and despite it being a relatively small size, it's amazing how you lose something and then you just never see it again. But I'm sure the uh, desiccated tomato will show up some at some point and uh, vindicate me uh, years in the future. Hey, Frank, tell our audience about how it ended up that you had an unexpected six months more. And sir, I'm so sorry. Can you repeat that question, please? Yeah, uh, you ended up staying six months more in space on board the station than was originally planned. Let everybody know what happened. Sure. Um, so, um, unfortunately, our uh, Soyuz spacecraft uh, developed a, a leak, uh, we think through a micrometeorite strike, uh, in the coolant system. And um, unfortunately, you know, the, the, the spacecraft was essentially intact, but we weren't really sure whether uh, we as a crew would be uh, safe um, in our return. And obviously, uh, that's a critical um, component, not just to our safety, but also, uh, and perhaps more importantly, uh, to the computer systems that manage our re-entry. Uh, and so because of that, uh, both NASA and Roscosmos came together. Uh, and again, as much as it was a challenge to stay uh, an extra six months, I'm so grateful that um, the agency was able to say, hey, you know what, the safe thing to do would be to fly up a new spacecraft and uh, have them wait and uh, ensure a more, a more safe return. And so, uh, yeah, again, I, I count it as an incredible blessing that we have the capability to do that and that all parties involved 
were willing to do that. And so uh, because they flew up the new spacecraft, we had to essentially backfill uh, the mission that that crew would have, uh, would have been filling because they had to fly that spacecraft up empty uh, because we all have to have a, um, a, safety, a safety vessel essentially to be able to go home in case of an emergency. And so they couldn't fly up both a, a replacement crew and our ability to have that uh, safety ship. And so, again, it's uh, been a challenge, but I am looking forward to a uh, return in a more, uh, more safe and more secure spacecraft here in a couple of weeks. You know, uh, you not only have set uh, that record, but uh, it is also uh, timely because it's Hispanic Heritage Month. And uh, you as a Hispanic American uh, symbolize the diversity of the wonderful, rich fabric of America. Um, give us a message uh, on this uh, month's celebration. Yes, sir. Well, it, it is very special timing. And actually, I, I came up uh, last year um, in the same month of September. And so um, it's been a unique um, sandwiching of my time up here. Uh, you know, and it, it's really an honor to represent both our country and uh, my uh, Latino community. Uh, and I love the fact that America is becoming more diverse. And uh, I think uh, because of that diversity, we bring different ways of thinking, different backgrounds. Uh, and really what that gives us is uh, more unique perspectives on problem solving, right? And as we face uh, bigger and more complex problems in the future, especially uh, as we take on the challenge of human spaceflight into deeper into our uh, solar system, I think those unique perspectives are going to provide uh, amazing uh, and, and different points of view that will help us solve problems in ways that we can't even imagine right now. And so uh, not just to Latinos out there, but to all of Americans, uh, man, I, I can't wait. You know, as a, as a parent to four young kids, I've seen what this younger generation is capable of, and I think our, our nation is going to be in good hands, and I can't wait to see what these uh, younger generations uh, the lengths that they'll take our, our country to. And I think uh, it's going to be pre pretty incredible to watch. That's that's just awesome. That is such a fantastic message. I do want to go back to um, to say that I know what a big deal it is for you and your Russian colleagues to stay for an extra period of time, but it also gives you kind of a unique perspective. I mean, the station uh, has changed actually because the crews have changed. When you got up there, crew four was a board station. You have seen crews come and go. Uh, you have welcomed them and um, joined with them. And then you've had to say farewell. And now it's your turn coming up. Um, how is that different? And how, how is that making you feel? Yeah, uh, Pam, thanks so much for that question. Because, you know, I, one of the biggest, really the, my favorite part of being up here, and I think uh, the most special part to me, is the fact that I've been able to fly with, uh, well, by the time Laurel's crew gets here, uh, it'll have been 28 other people that I've spent uh, time and space with, uh, which if I do the math right, that's almost 5% of the humans that have ever been to space, uh, which is pretty, pretty incredible. Um, and, you know, my, my NASA crewmates have been just absolutely outstanding. Um, I've been able to fly with almost half of my classmates, which, as you know, uh, flying with a classmate just has a pretty unique uh, feel to it and uh, pretty special. Uh, and so, uh, honestly, I, I couldn't have uh, imagined that I would get to fly with half of my class. And then uh, the international partners, starting with uh, Samantha, an Italian astronaut, and then uh, Koichi and Soichi, both uh, Japanese astronauts, uh, Sultan, an Emirati astronaut, and then uh, Axiom brought up uh, Ali and Ray, uh, who were uh, Arab uh, astronauts. And so just having that diversity up here was ju just such a uh, unique feeling. And of course, uh, Sergey and Dimitri uh, and their families, you know, they're the only other people that really understand what this challenge was like. And so we'll have that brotherhood and that uh, bond for the rest of our lives. Uh, so again, it's just been an incredible experience. Um, you know, and all of that, uh, the crew has been incredible. But then we've also been able to see uh, and feel the incredible support that the, the ground team provides. Uh, I've been able to work with some just uh, absolutely outstanding flight directors. Uh, the flight control teams have been outstanding. And the support staff that just make sure that we have everything uh, we and our families need to, to function uh, at a high level up here. 
Um, so just that whole experience of the NASA team uh, and the international partner teams have, have uh, been the, the most unique and the most special uh, experience for me. Uh, Frank, how many hours a day do you uh, work out uh, physical training in order to keep your body functioning in that uh, very unique uh, microgravity environment? Yes, sir. They, uh, they schedule us for about two hours a day. Um, about a, an hour and 15 of that is uh, on the ARED machine, which is a resistance machine, essentially what we, could, we would consider weightlifting um, down on Earth. And that's because, uh, obviously, our bone density is one of the things that we uh, most quickly uh, lose up here, and that's because we're not, we're not standing, we're not walking, and that provides a lot of the um, impact that our bones need to maintain their health. And so that resistance training provides some of that, um, I, I guess, uh, resistance to our bones and keeps them strong. Um, and then we also have uh, cardiovascular workouts for about 30 to 45 minutes a day. And we can do that on either uh, the stationary bike or on the uh, treadmill. And so the combination of those things, I think, keep us pretty healthy. Honestly, I've tried to be uh, pretty diligent about that because I want to be uh, as functional as possible when I get back. I'm actually pretty excited. Again, as a doctor, I'm really excited to see how my body does when I return. I feel like I've uh, stayed at a pretty high level up here. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see what those first couple of days feel like when I'm back on Earth. Wow, Frank, you've had so many experiences in your life, you know, at the uh, back Back at the academy, uh, you were on the jump team, then you were a helicopter pilot, you went through medical school, uh, and then of course astronaut training and are now on orbit. So you've had all these amazing experiences. Maybe you can share what, what has been the most difficult part and also your favorite part of the mission. Yeah, no, I, I've been blessed with some pretty incredible opportunities throughout my life. Um, I think the most difficult one, again, is pretty easy, just the separation from family. Uh, that's been a challenge. Um, you know, as much as every day up here is different, uh, right, because you're doing different maintenance, different science, um, there is some monotony to it, right, as far as every day the schedule pretty much looks the same. And then, again, we have some of the most absolutely beautiful and stunning scenery you could ever imagine. But uh, inside the station, you're pretty limited to a, about a five-bedroom house. And so... Uh, psychologically for a year that was a little bit of a challenge but uh, my crewmates uh, were absolutely key to that just uh, getting to know each other better spending time together uh, telling lots of stories uh, you know having Steve Bowen up here it was actually uh, pretty special because we were able to hear a lot of shuttle stories and as much as we made fun of him for that uh, for me that was a pretty uh, just it was neat to listen and and learn uh, having spent some time with Peggy you know and what she's meant to uh, human spaceflight that was also pretty special um, so yeah, it, it's, uh, I, I'd say those were some of the most uh, challenging components, uh, but um, also my favorite because it involves the people. Frank, anybody watching this is just absolutely amazed and especially the young people watching this. So as we close out, why don't you give a, a message to the young people of planet Earth uh, especially those of Hispanic origin. Yes, sir. Well, uh, thanks again for that opportunity. And uh, again, it's an honor to represent our nation, to represent NASA uh, and the various communities that we represent up here. Uh, and I would just say, uh, you know, keep working hard, have big dreams, uh, but start acting as, on those dreams as soon as you can. Uh, really the hard work and the dedication are, are the key components to making those dreams come true. Uh, and as much as possible, be kind to others and surround yourselves uh, with good team and good teammates because ultimately there's very few things in life that we accomplish individually and almost everything uh, big that we accomplish as humanity requires incredible teamwork. And so try to surround yourself with good people and go out there and do uh, great things. That's beautiful and we thank you. Bless you, uh, Frank. We'll see you when you come home. All right, sir, thanks so much for your time, Pam. It was an honor uh, to spend some time with you all, and I look forward to seeing you soon. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event.
Thank you to all participants from NASA headquarters. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications.